Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge and episode three of our after action report slash playthrough of the Global War scenario from World in Flames Collector's Edition. It is the beginning of the March-April 1940 turn. Reinforcements have been placed and the lending resources stage has been completed and we are about to determine initiative for the turn. Now the Axis won initiative last turn. They also have a plus one uh, die roll modifier on the initiative roll this turn. The red die is the Axis die, green die is the Allied die. Let's see who's got the initiative. And it looks like we have a nine plus one, 10 to 10, it's a tie. However, because the Axis won initiative last turn, that indicates that the Allies will win initiative this turn. Now. The Axis do have the opportunity for a reroll. The question now is, do they want to use that? Um, that really depends on the weather. Looks like uh, we do have a plus one to the weather roll uh, because of the last weather roll, which will give us a 40% chance of fine weather in the North Temperate, this first pair of impulses. 20% uh, chance of rain, 20% chance of storm, and 20% chance of snow. Uh, if the Axis do ask for a reroll, that's going to eliminate their plus one die roll modifier for the May-June turn. So I think they're going to let that slide and they're going to let, the, uh, let the Allies win initiative. Now the Allies are probably now have to determine uh, who's going to get the first impulse. Do the Allies want to go first or do the axis. So let's take a look at the map situation and see what uh, see what's going to work out best for the Allies. Uh, checking in with the Chinese over in Asia, uh, there doesn't seem to be any real pressing need for the Chinese to go first. They've got pretty much they've got all of their uh, units where they really need them to be right now. Uh, nothing pressing that's going to force them to uh, want to go first. Uh, the Soviets are neutral, so they don't really uh, uh, care one way or the other. The USA is a long way from war, so they don't have any real reason to, uh, to go first. Let's see, uh, let's see what it's like over in uh, Western Europe with the Commonwealth and French. Now over on the Western Front here, um, as you can see, the French Front is really uh, still pretty thin. Uh, there are only a few Commonwealth Corps on the continent. Um, the Germans still have to go through Belgium and the Allies figure that will be uh, at least one impulse for them to take out the Belgians, best case scenario for the Germans. Um, however, it's going to take the Commonwealth um, two impulses unless they do a combined in order to get uh, Wavell here and some other reinforcements onto the continent um, in a single impulse. So. I think what the Allies will do is go ahead and go first, just so that they can get their naval actions out of the way, get the reinforcements at sea, and then uh, if the Germans decide to attack Belgium, if the weather's good enough, uh, the Allies will have an opportunity to then do a land with the Commonwealth, which will allow them to get their reinforcements uh, ashore in France before the Germans have a chance to strike at the line. So let's go ahead and have the uh, have the Allies take the first initiative. And we're going to go ahead and flip over the initiative marker here to show that the Allies won initiative uh, for March-April. So first action phase and weather determination. Let's see, the um, weather die has a plus one from last turn, uh, it's a five. So looking at uh, March, April, five plus one is six. That's gonna be right here. It is storm in the Arctic, rain in North Temperate, fair in um, North Monsoon, uh, Mediterranean and North Monsoon, rain in South Monsoon and fair in South Temperate. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that down and uh, we'll pick up the action uh, on the game board. So we're now up to the declare war step of the first impulse. And the Soviet Union, despite the rain and storm, are going to take a bit of a small gamble here and they are going to uh, demand Bessarabia, uh, this portion of Romania here. So the German now needs to either allow the claim or deny the claim. 
If they deny the claim, the Soviet Union will be forced to declare war on Romania. They will be at war with one another. Now, the problem here is that the at-start Romanian forces, as you can see, are right down here. They have a total of six corps. Now, if the Germans have the Romanians deny the claim and they can keep the Soviets from advancing any core-sized unit beyond the border area here, by the end of the turn, the Germans will be able to force a peace. The problem is they've got a six-hex border, actually one, two, three, four, five, yes, yeah, six-hex six hex border uh, that the Romanians would need to hold. They only start with six core. They'll get two reserve core during the reinforcement phase for the next turn. But as you can see, the individual Romanian corps are not that strong. So even if they were to set up um, in Chisinau and Chernaudi up here, there's still enough of a gap that the Soviets could work their way through. If the Soviets can manage to get just one corps into Romania itself, then the Germans will not be able to force a peace, and the Soviets will then be able to take their time and grind down the uh, Romanians, eventually capturing Bucharest, conquering them, which will remove German access to that oil. Uh, so for those reasons, the, um, the Romanians will allow the claim. Uh, now, if the Soviets had been forced to declare war, if they had denied the claim, the Soviets, uh, the U.S., entry action of uh, USSR declares war on Romania would have been a minus 18, which means that one US chit would have been removed from the entry pool and on an eight or less, a second chit would have been removed. There are only two chits in the pool. Uh, so the allies do have the chits to absorb both of them and it would set them back uh, a turn or two uh, potentially more than that depending upon what uh, future chit draws are but uh, for the germans they just don't think the risk is worth it to uh, lose these uh, these three oil right now so the um, romanians have allowed the soviet claim and that's it as far as the allied declaration of war uh, step goes so we move on to uh, choosing actions since the Soviets now are uh, still neutral, as well as the United States, both of them uh, will be forced to choose a combined, since neither one is going to pass. The Commonwealth is going to do a naval impulse, and the, uh, the, French, the French are going to do, I think they're going to do a land impulse. Uh, given the weather, it's going to take them a little bit longer to get their ground troops into uh, into position. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and move on to the perform actions. Um, there are no port attacks uh, for the Western allies uh, in this impulse. Uh, no, well, actually there may be, we will have a naval air mission or two. So we'll go ahead and get the naval air mission and uh, the naval movement out of the way and we'll pick up after that. Well, with the naval movement phase, the uh, Commonwealth has sent some uh, transports out here towards Australia to pick up the Sydney militia to move them somewhere a little more useful. ABDA is in the process of transferring from uh, Singapore over to uh, Aden so they can keep a closer eye on that Red Sea flotilla of the Italians. And there are some more uh, reinforcements heading into the Red Sea. The uh, Med Fleet is still here in Alexandria, just kind of waiting to see where it may be needed. Uh, same for Force H here at Gibraltar. The um, Commonwealth also covered the uh, convoys here in the Bay of Biscay, as well as the Pharaoh's Gap and the North Atlantic in case the Germans decide to uh, try to sortie again. Uh, the HMS uh, Courageous left Force H with a couple of cruiser escorts to go back to England. Uh, the purpose there is to upgrade her carrier air group, uh, which will take a turn or two, and then she will return to uh, Force H. In the North Sea, the reinforcements for Northern France are out at sea and the home fleet is out uh, protecting them with a uh, little picket out here of uh, Dutch and Polish refugee ships. Um, over in uh, the Americas, like I said, the um, 
The British have covered the North Sea, uh, North Atlantic, uh, sorry, North Atlantic convoys. And uh, there is no naval combat. The Axis do not wish to initiate any naval combat. Uh, there's no strategic bombardment or ground strikes that are going to occur. Uh, so we're up to rail movement. The Soviets have one rail move as part of their combined, and they will send these Siberians westward uh, to Leningrad. And the French, as part of their land uh, impulse, they will rail these Senegalese militia up to, uh, up to Rouen. And we're up to uh, land movement. Well, with the Soviet land movement phase, uh, they are allowed under the limitations of a combined to do uh, five land moves. Uh, they're gonna start redeploying the forces um, in the south here, either further north against Finland or into Poland. Uh, it's never too early to start uh, deploying for the uh, coming German attack, and if they get lucky, maybe they might even be able to declare war on Germany. So, to that end, um, let's see what we have here. They will occupy newly claimed Bessarabia. The rain and storm down here is going to slow things down a bit, so I think what we'll do is we'll just get these guys into Odessa, where they'll be in a position to rail out next uh, over the next turn or so. Uh, one, two, three, and we'll start moving. Uh, we'll move those guys in for four. And now yeah, we'll move Timoshenko on down there. It's going to be a little while for the Soviets to actually redeploy their forces. Um, one, of the, one of the bad things about being neutral and being restricted to uh, combined impulses only. Let's take a look at um, the, uh, the French now. They've got, uh, they've got some land movement they're gonna wanna do, and we'll probably check in with the uh, Chinese front here as well. Well, here we are in France, and the French have a complete line. The Allies have a line here, but it's very thin, as you can see in some places. And the expected main thrust of the German attack is going to come probably between uh, between Lille here and uh, and Metz. So right in this area here, um, the Germans have a lot of armor, certainly more than the Allies do. The only armor unit the French have actually is here in Paris. It just arrived as a reinforcement. It's also their strongest ground unit. So we need to try to uh, figure out how to bolster this line. Ideally, we would like to have a double line here, which would prevent any blitzes from uh, occupying the initial attack hex and, and pouring through. Uh, that's going to be a tall order given the amount of time that we have left before we expect the Germans to come in. So let's see. Um, the mud is not, or I'm sorry, the rain is not helping things either by doubling terrain costs. So. Um, I'd like to get these uh, garrison units into the line here. However, if I do that, they will be inverted because of the, um, uh, the rain, which would give the Germans a plus one for each of these that are inverted. That'd be a plus two on any attack on that hex this turn. So I may just wait and see if we can get some fine weather next impulse and then slide them up since uh, there's no threat of the Germans actually attacking here this impulse. Uh, we, might even, we might even be able to get the uh, Commonwealth to, uh, to take over that hex as well, which would help the French tremendously by shortening up their line here. Uh, let's see. I'd also like to, if I could, get the headquarters units out of the front lines. So what we'll do is we'll put... Uh, George here underneath the artillery unit. And we'll bring up the militia here. And we've got another. Yeah, we'll move. 
this infantry up here. He is probably, he's going to slide into this forest next impulse uh, to uh, strengthen that front line hex. But you can see we, um, the French do not have quite what they need here. Um, we will slide that guy over so we can bring the anti-aircraft guns a little further westward where they'll be more useful. Um, I doubt the Germans are going to try to attack uh, through the fortress here. Uh, anybody attacking from this hex and this hex would be thirded, although just leaving one unit in the hex does make it uh, a lot easier to occupy the hex. Um, unfortunately, that's about all the, uh, the French can do this impulse. And like I said, we'll see if the... Um, if the Commonwealth can get the additional ground troops ashore, maybe um, take over another hex of the line here for the French. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, China and see if there's anything the Chinese need to do to adjust their positions over there. Well, here in China, there's not an awful lot for the Chinese to do. Um, their front line is pretty well set. Uh, they're in decent terrain. Um, in the south here, there is a river right along here, which is uh, helping uh, Chang's hex and the hex to the west there, the forest hex. It would be nice to have a second unit in here with the cavalry, uh, especially in the mountains, but they don't really have one available that the Canton militia uh, could fill in. The problem they have, though, again, is, is the rain up here in the north temperate. Anybody who moves is going to be inverted, which again is just going to give the Japanese a, a plus one uh, to any attack. And that may be enough to uh, uh, incentivize them to do that. The um, communists, though, uh, with the desert, desert costs three on the uh, Pacific map for leg units. And rain is treated as fine. So... Mao will go ahead and extend his line one hex to the north up here. And let's see. That will probably be it for the uh, for the for the Chinese. At least for now, yep. Uh, so that's about it for the uh, land movement. There's going to be no air transport or debark of land units at sea, no invasions, no para drops, um, obviously no land combat. Some air rebases. Uh, let's take a look and see if there's anything the uh, French might want to do or the Commonwealth for that matter. Um, yeah, I tell you what, they are going to rebase their fighters back to the forest hex here. Uh, this will help protect them against any ground strikes by German aircraft and uh, move them a little bit further, perhaps out of range here. Other than that, one, two, three, four, five. So this guy is able to support uh, any hexes that are attacked in here. The um, P-36 is in Paris. They've got a six range. They can intercept out to three hexes away which is basically here. Um, I think we may, we may be all right with that. Yeah, I think we'll, that'll do for the air bases. Commonwealth doesn't really want to rebase anything at this time, which brings us to reorganization, which we have none, and it's going to be the uh, Axis impulse. They'll get their first impulse. The marker moves up two per the uh, weather chart. So we're in the three box now, and it's over to the, uh, over to the axis. All right, so we're at the declare war phase or step of uh, the axis impulse. And because the uh, Soviets demanded Bessarabia and um, Romania um, allowed the claim in the following declare war step for the Axis. Uh, Hungary and Bulgaria both put claims in on Romania, 
And Germany is going to allow uh, the claim, uh, Hungary's claim against Romania, which will make Transylvania part of Hungary and South Dobruja part of Bulgaria. What this will allow the Germans to do is align Hungary or Bulgaria in any later uh, Axis declaration of war step. And Romania can be aligned only after France is either conquered or Vichy is installed. Um, with that, there are no other declarations of war. The Germans uh, have the combat power they need to attack Belgium. They just don't have it in the right place. So they're going to do a land impulse in order to uh, shift their forces around and get them where they want them for the upcoming invasion. The Italians being neutral will do a combine. And the Japanese will also do a combined out here in the Pacific. Uh, they're going to... Uh, probably re start to rearrange some of their troops in anticipation of good weather showing up in the uh, north temperate zone and uh, getting into monsoon season in north monsoon. So we'll move into that here uh, now with uh, port attacks, which there are none, naval air missions, none, and naval movement. Uh, the Japanese get two naval moves, I believe, if I look at the activity limits chart and naval moves. Japan, two naval moves. They will move, let's see, I'll take these two transports into the uh, South China Sea, where they will scoop up the two Marines, and those are their naval moves. Uh, they're are no um, naval combats. Uh, actually, the Japanese are probably going to pay as they go here rather than paying for a full combined. Uh, so I believe they have uh, two tenths for each of the, uh, or one tenth for each of the ships. However, the first unit is free. So that'll cost them one tenth of uh, oil, which we'll go ahead and pay for now. Here on the track, you can see they've got five tenths here. It becomes four tenths. And the Germans are doing a land, so we'll just go ahead and pay for the land. The, uh, with the oil rules, Germany doing a land is going to be 10 tenths or one whole oil point. So we will Go ahead and pay that. Three becomes a two. And now all of their land units are fueled for the upcoming impulse. All right, we've skipped ahead here to the land movement phase for the axis impulse. And uh, normally stacking in WIF is not a much of an issue because you can have only two or three land units in a particular hex and up to three air units. However, the one exception to that is the, uh, is the low countries and uh, northern France here where things tend to get a little congested with a lot of stacks, uh, especially early here in 1940. So this should be interesting. Um, the Germans are expecting the Belgians to deploy in uh, probably two of the three cities here. They, Liège, can be attacked from four hexes, so they don't anticipate, and really maybe even five hexes, they don't anticipate much uh, being set up here in Liège because of that. Uh, probably most of the Belgian forces will be deployed here in Brussels to try to hold there, which means they can expect either some troops in Antwerp or Liège. So we want to be able to take out uh, Brussels for sure on the first impulse, preferably, preferably eliminating all of the Belgian forces on that um, initial impulse and taking as much of the country as we can. So with that in mind, we just need to shift some of our um, more powerful assault stacks into, uh, into position. So this will be interesting with the stacks as they are. We'll see how this goes. We'll pull these guys out for a second. them up there, put the aircraft 
right back and just kind of swap locations there. Transports go back. Now this hex, we've got uh, fairly strong forces here. It's a 19 strength. Uh, the Again, the rain is kind of hindering things because it's doubling the terrain costs. So this hex, uh, these forces are going to end up here underneath this uh, Stuka. So the problem is only the two core sized units can make it there. The flak unit doesn't have the movement. So the Panzerjäger is a move there and the uh, flak will move there. Actually, we'll have Von Lieb move down. And he goes back there. They will stay there. We'll have these guys shift eastward. If they were there, yep. All right, I think now that um, it didn't take much, but um, that's pretty much what they needed. Now they should be ready to go in. Uh, as long as it's rain or better, it should be a um, no-brainer for, uh, for the Germans uh, to go ahead and uh, move into Belgium uh, on their next impulse. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if the weather cooperates. Now, back in Asia, for the Japanese, they get three land moves in the uh, combined. And what they'd like to do, they ultimately, they would they would like to take, take Changsha as well as grab that resource there. Those are kind of their intermediate goals uh, here in China right now. Uh, the weather is good in North Monsoon currently. They'd like to uh, take advantage of that while they can. There's a decent chance the weather stays good through May, June. So they'd like to, they would like to sort of link up here along the coast and uh, again, start to push in this region here. So with that in mind, they're going to um, move this motorized corn to Hang Chow. That's uh, four movement points doubled for the rain in North Tempered up there. Um, I think that's really, there's not much else for them to do right now. We'll see how long the turn goes um, and uh, how much more of their plan they can uh, they can put into action. So that should be it for land comp or land movement. There's no debark invasions or pair drops. Uh, again, uh, no land combat, no air rebases. So we're on to reorganization, no reorganization, and that is going to do it for the Axis first impulse. Again, with uh, the weather, it moves up too. You can see with the NA, there's no chance of ending the turn. And it becomes the Allies' second impulse here. Probably no chance to end the turn because the Allies are not all going to pass, so they won't get that minus two. Uh, we'll go ahead and see what the weather's going to be for the upcoming.